I am unashamed. What about you? So I told y'all the story about me trying to get this this cameraman from when they did the Yeti movie. I told him, you know, he needed to make the move. Let's let's step up. I gave him a great illustration of being married to Jesus, but as a cameraman, he's been dating his girlfriend for five years. So I'm like, drop the camera and experience the magic. <laughs> well, <laughs> the next thing I know is I realized I've just said this in front of a million a people, lot of people on the podcast. So we have somebody that may know her. And in fact, I think she watches sometimes. So. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we do a dinner scene, you know, after the podcast. That was their last scene, you know. Right. And I said, hey, yeah, uh, you know, great job. I just want you to know that you're on the clock. <laughs> because that story, even though I didn't plan on it, I told your story. He said, well, did you use my name? I said, pretty sure I did. <laughs> <laughs> so she could possibly put the pieces together, but doesn't matter. It's happened now. <laughs> he said, was there any way we can, you know, go back and take that out? And I was like. No, now you're getting back into the same problem why I gave the speech. I said, all you need to know, as a matter of importance, is you're on the clock. You have 48 hours. <laughs> Make your decision. I mean, you don't have to marry her, but but it's going to be out there that you got a commitment problem. That's I would I would try to get in there before it airs. That's right. And let's let's have a talk. That's right. At least at least tell her that you've thought about it now or something. You know. You know, I actually felt bad about it. You know, on the way down there, because I thought, boy, that guy, it, it's fixed to get real. <laughs> he couldn't even eat lunch. <laughs> you had him so shook up. <laughs> Nausea set in. <laughs> and, but I noticed later he was coming. I, I think he really yeah. realized I got commitment issues. Well, and, and it's, it's you funny. Remember, you were suggesting no more than the Bible says about you have yeah. male and female. And they unite with one another. They become one flesh, and they are married, and it's all legal before God. Do you know what came out There's of that? There's no sin there. Yeah. You, you, you weren't inviting him to sin at all. And what came out of that conversation <clears throat> was his faith. Now, he brought it up. You yeah. know? And I, 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 was, I was impressed. But then I was more sure than ever <laughs> that this needs to happen. Uh -huh. So sometimes I think people just... Need a little nudging. Well, you had the information that he had dated it for five years. A guy like Dan, who works for us, I mean, about the most trustworthy individual you ever want to run across, but he doesn't date at all. He's not interested in marrying. So, you know, so be it. And you and don't have to marry. No. No, but uh, look, what I did last night. Jesus said, because uh, of the kingdom, even if you say, you know what, like the Apostle Paul, he says, you know, I think I'll just forego marriage because. Of the present, well, I have some. Present I have single, a couple of single friends that are, you know, in their sixties and seventies, and they never married. They're good, solid Christian guys. They just had the gift of celibacy. I mean, Paul called it a gift. He well, said, "I wish you had the gift yeah. I have." So, dating or the lack thereof, it can be stressful, especially when you're a teenager. And I mean, it's like it took me a year dating my future wife, which I did marry, for me to even entertain the idea that she might. Continue this, which the was Apostle a, Paul made it clear: if you wanted to marry, you, you you can do so. But he did say those who marry will face. I'm quoting directly First Corinthians. Back oh, I, chapter, you love this seven. verse. Well, I just make a point that <laughs> those who marry will face many troubles in, in this life, and I want to want to spare you this. Yeah. He was just saying if you travel alone, it's cheaper, and it's it's it's. I uh, told our cameraman trouble, that. You know, well, you know. and he said that during a time of great persecution too. So, that's but right. I told him that I was like, look, you're trying to get all the the eyes dotted and the T's crossed before you get married. That's right. never going to happen. Right. And guess what? When you get married, they're still going to be there. But the difference is you're doing it together. Well, I always had a theory that you know, we we all married young. It's just kind of what we all did. I mean, I think Jeff was the oldest one, and he was like 21 or two. But So we kind of grew up together. 
and you know, at least I had issues and all that, but we kind of learned it as we did together. And you and mom were the same way. Yeah, and, we and, had and, different situations. Because my theory always has been, and a lot of people wait a long time. The problem with that is, and that's, I mean, look, people can do whatever they want to, but the problem with it is, is you build up a lot of your own habits and your own way of looking at things. And so then all of a sudden you merge in with this other person and, you know, that's going to be rocky water too. I mean, yeah, it's just a way. Well, the longer, the longer you wait. And the, and the children come and we're all under one roof. Well, yeah. it's a challenge. It's a what challenge. I've noticed is the longer you wait, the more baggage you acquire <laughs> that's right. and bring to, <laughs> to, the, to the table. That's right. But I think a uh, lot of them look at the financial end of it and say, well, you know, oh, that's if, if I don't thing. make the commitment. There's no way I'll ever get in a financial buyout over this in case somebody pulls some stunt, including me. Yeah. I'll pull one or she pulls one, and then we got to go to court and all that. Yeah. And so they're just free riding it, just saying, well, you know. And that's normal, back. Phil. Look, the, I mean, look, my in laws, I mean, they've grown to love me. But the reason they said no at first is because when he asked the question, well, what are you going to do for a living? It's like, not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's not very conducive to, with in-laws. I said, I'm going to work hard, and I'm going to trust God, and we'll make well, My goal it. is not to be a, not the president a of a bank, or my goal is to, you know. I want to be a doctor. I said, I'm going to be a fisherman <laughs> and a hunter and figure it out. And that was the wrong answer. Yeah. But you know what? It was the truth, and it worked out. And well, look at you now. You're just quite the success story. Though. I was going to make a point that, you know, I have trouble – I mean, parenting is, is tough no matter what. But I had more trouble, you know, with my daughter or now daughter since, you know, Karina from Nicaragua has become part of our family. But I do feel like they're in their teenage years. I'm like, I need to spend more time with them because I spent way more time with my sons. I mean, yeah. I take them hunting or fishing. I mean, I tried that with my daughter, but she just she didn't like she, 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 she didn't She don't want to do it. Yeah. So I'm like, well, then when we start having conversations – you know, the things she likes, I don't even know what she's talking about. So, and we do, you know, things. We go on trips, we play cards. But I told her a couple of weeks ago, we were in Austin. I was like, I need to take you on a date. Because I got to thinking, she's at that time where she's, you know, she's interested in dating. But I, I thought, well, I, I want to show her how you should be treated. Yep. And even though it's a daddy-daughter date. So, she didn't really say anything. She just kind of was like, hmm. So I thought, well, she didn't like that idea. <laughs> so last night, I mean, look, I have been on a run. We've been filming. We've been doing things. We've duck hunted for days. I, I was tired last night, and I woke up. Well, I, I took a nap, and when I woke up, she was like, are you ready to go on our date tonight? Uh -oh. And I said, playing cards? And she's like, no, I was thinking something a little more elaborate, like a restaurant. Of course, I don't really like going to restaurants. And I said, what do you got in mind? And she picked a place that I do like. And so it was on the other side of Monroe. So I was, I was like, you know what? Yeah, because I'm the one that brought it up. And for whatever reason, she she, she's pursuing that. Yeah. And, and so I thought it was just me and her, but here come her and Karina. They got all dressed up, you know, and I was kind of looking. I don't looking. believe I ever took you all to a restaurant. No. You no, didn't. but that's okay. It, it would have got awkward for everyone involved. <laughs> well, yeah. we, so <laughs> we didn't miss it. I do know how to socialize, and so plus you have to wear a mask going in. So here was the here was the weird part. We pull up at this restaurant. It's packed. There was no parking places. Of course, it's mask required, and put the mask on. But I walked in. Everybody, the the place was. Can you take it off when you eat, or you have to? Lift I it? took mine off. Yeah, you can. If everyone the else seemed to. I just didn't want to sit there in and California. Stare at people. You have to you walk in, and you didn't have a mask, on, or, you, or you did. And what's the diff when you finally get to eat? It's not. There's no diff. There's, I mean, in, yeah. in California, you have to put it on in between bites, is what somebody told me. I don't know if that's true or not. But I want to say this. You know what was <laughs> weird? Bites. Which I think Missy was a little disappointed because she wanted to go, but I'm like, no, nope, it's. Daddy daughter thing, you know, have yeah. fun. <laughs> but you know what? What? And I want to say this to our listeners. What? What shocked me? You know, we talked about life, and they. Now we had fun, and, and different things happen. You know, just <laughs> things seem to happen to me that are really weird. But and, <laughs> we, and we've th all noted that <laughs> there were some funny things about about getting in the restaurant because we walked in and they went the oh, I mean they knew who I was. I had a mask on. The guy said, "Jace, we we're full." I was like, 
okay. I said, we're out of here. And he said, however, let me, give me a minute, because he felt bad. I mean, I hadn't, I, I, I had been there once, you know. <laughs> and now he's fixing to lose money on you. <laughs> well, well, and he knows. And he know, he knew how it was, and he was like, Let, let's make this, this work. <laughs> so the table they threw together was comical. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, but it worked, and we had fun, which made it part of the story. And we talked about life. We had a good time. I mean, I, I was thinking this, this happened. I mean, what happened was way better than I was anticipating. It was really good for future endeavors. I mean, I, I just think a good bond was formed. Mm-hmm. And so then I think what was cool, because then we were talking about she's going on a retreat uh, this weekend. And I was like, well, it's going to be cold. She was like, what? Of course, you know, my she didn't say you don't hunt. She doesn't realize we have a major front coming in. You're yeah. going to freeze your rear end off out in the outdoors. Right. I was like, well, do you have any gloves? I was going through it. She was like, I, I don't have gloves. I was like, I'm gonna go get you a pair of gloves now. So we wind up, you know, at a at a uh, one of these pharmacy stores. Believe it or not, they sell the best gloves I've ever bought. They're like five bucks. They're awesome. I bet they are five dollars. I wore them today because look, I bought her two pair, and I bought me three pair. Oh, you're so sure about all that? Well, man. they're women's gloves, but. Did you wear them with your women coat you got from no, Russia? Nobody has said a word to me in the duck blind said, hey, Jace, you're wearing women's gloves. They're the warmest pair of gloves I've ever owned. I mean, I'm right. And they cost $5. Five farm. bucks. How did you run up on this? Just Well, that's enough about dating. No. I, <laughs> taking, I, you, taking your daughter to date. Okay, we look, got it. I was, on the, I was in the aisle. Let's get into some meat. Hang here. on. You said how to run up on them. I was going down the aisle picking up some medication at his pharmacy. And they had some gloves hanging there. And I thought, those things look warm. But I couldn't find a size that fit me because it said women's. So I thought, you need surely a- there are big women out here. And look, in the back, they had multi, extra, extra large, which was about right. You needed a woman with man hands. That's yeah, they, they got, they Remember sell Remember Seinfeld man in? But I was going to tell you this because you want the spiritual side. So I'm going to tell you. Well, when I walked into this pharmacy, there were two African-American women behind the counter and they were like welcome great to see you and i was like (laughs) these people are excited i said i'm phenomenal fantastic and i love your cheer and they both just kind of looked back i was like awesome (laughs) so when i get my gloves i come up there and check out well one of them the younger one said jace is that you i mean i have a mask on and i was like yes She's like, when, when you you're kind of sticking out though around the mask. She, she said, when you gonna get me on one of your TV shows or anything? Because nobody knows who I am. <laughs> That's what that was the line. I said, it's kind of sad in a way. <laughs> I said, y'all have been so cheerful since I come in here, and now you've brought up something. Look, be careful what you wish for. There's a lot about being on TV that's not good. I said, but I will tell you this. I said, the next time you look in the mirror. You need to say, even though people may not know who I am, God knows who I am, and he made me a masterpiece. When I said that, the other woman said, praise Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I'm just excited that y'all are excited despite all the chaos that's going on in, in our world. And, and the woman said, now here, we, we're in a store now, and there are people in line, and they're listening to this conversation. And she said, well, I live by a rule, just love God. And I said, and what about one another? I said, people would look at us right now and say, what are y'all doing? We're just loving each other, loving life, talking about spiritual things. I just thought, now this is a moment here in this store, and I'm, you know, getting to share this with my daughter, that it it all started from spending quality time when I didn't really want to go out. But when I was driving home, I thought, this this is the kind of stuff I want my daughter to see. Good work, probably. You should have told her to look in the mirror and say, I'm good enough. I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. Yeah, I remember that. Stuart Smalley. Let's take a break. So uh, I noticed Martin was out the other day because we were doing the stuff with Yeti. And, uh, of course, they have a podcast now, too, you know, at the Duck Call Room. But you made an observation about Martin. Do you remember what you said? I noticed how his hair had 
basically disappeared. <laughs> well, it was always thin, you know. He's when he was a pretty old. young guy. He's not you even used 30 to call him Horsehead, so I've never seen a bald horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do notice this. He's a big, Ma- strong guy. Martin has such a big head that when he lost that hair, it w- it does look like the moon now when he when he comes by. He's still got a little bit hanging on the back of Not much. Not much. He's kind of like Cy. You know, Cy has a skullet. Yeah, it's not it's not a mullet. It's a skullet because you can see his skull. He's got the hair on the back. That may go viral. It may go. So uh, what we need to tell Martin about is our sponsor. Uh, maybe they need to get on. Uh, they need to sponsor the Duck Call Room. It's Keeps, and uh, we've been talking about these guys for a long time because basically they help you keep your hair. Of course, Martin needs to really do something quick because he's in trouble. <laughs> he keep all five strands. <laughs> he, he, better, he better get there quickly. Basically, you go to their website. Uh, they ship everything directly to your door. Um, so we want you to get started on this if you need it. It's keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash door. You get 50% off your first order uh, for the hair loss treatment. So it's keeps dot com slash door. So I got one question before we get into uh, the text. Um, just an observation. So I want to know what y'all thought about it. So, I, you know, I cut through by size house to come out here. I think I'm the only one that does it. And no, I do. Oh, do you, so have yeah. you seen the pig that's there on the road on Carcass Lane? It's right, right when you first turn on there, right on I the right. I thought that was a beaver. No, it's a pig. It's a hog. It's a wild hog. It's a wild hog. So look, I thought that was a beaver. I looked and said, "That's the biggest beaver I've ever seen." It in was my actually life. a pig. Are you sure? Have you seen I'm it? Yeah, I'm driving by there I on the way home. So here's my question: about it. So it's been there over a week. And nothing's touched it. Nothing's touched it. Well, that is weird. Right up the road, the buzzards were all over something. Because I thought it was a beaver. Yeah. I said to myself, not even the buzzards. But I thought the same thing about this pig. Now, because it's gotten warm enough. I realize it's cold. Oh, it can't be a pig. So You're either saying it's a hog. It's not a pig. What's a hog? It's a pig. Like a wild hog. A young young wild hog. That's what it is. I I stopped and looked at it. I'm thinking pig, female, hog, male. It's a hairy hog is what it is. You look at you're it. You're 100%. Per- I've looked at it. I know what you're talking about. Not much that they haven't. He hasn't. What they, I'm saying is, I, you know, they put deer carcasses up and down that road, and the buzzards are there, and the well, worms well, are there, but nothing has touched this Carcass lady. Road. I don't know what the deal is with that. <laughs> but I did notice this. But what is your there, point? There. Well, my question was, why is that the case? Why, why won't the buzzards well, eat the thing? Well, we now have an identification issue. <laughs> I, I thought it was because it was no, a beaver. I'm no, going to take a picture no, of it today. No, Chase. <laughs> I know a hog from the beavers. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> I'm younger. I have better eyes. I I'm with that. It, it's you're going to see. It's oh, take I'm, th- I'm going to take a picture of it. We'll show it get, to our audience. Get close. It'll my be- question wasn't what it is. My question was why won't anything eat it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it just because I wild? don't have a good answer? <laughs> and I did notice one other observation. I don't see any carcasses on Carcass Lane this year. So does that mean the rednecks have? Have quit killing deer, or have they found another place to? They throw should it? find of another way to dispose of them. I hate it. It's just instead all of, of throwing them out on the side of the road. Yeah, yeah. It's hard for our viewers to get the idea, yeah. but it's like the longest straightaway <laughs> out in, here in North Louisiana. <laughs> That's right. It's just a long straightaway, and there's just usually dead deer carcasses, skeletons on both sides. I mean, of some the road. years twenty, thirty of them. Yeah. yeah, along the way. All right, so that uh, that was just a question. We'll we'll figure that out and and catch you up. So we're going to do a couple of, or maybe if we get there, a couple of listener questions today, which I love these segments. And there was one that came to me. Um, oh shoot, I didn't write his name down. I think it's Jeff. Um, but he's asked some questions before. But so here's what he said: My wife and I were watching these ghost shows on TV where people see ghosts. And this raises a question to us about ghosts, and I'm looking for some sort of Bible-based answer. It says, one, what are ghosts, and why are they still here? And number two, why are there just a few of them, and what keeps them here? That was his question. So I thought it was interesting because— Why is there just a few of them? Well, that's what he asked. In other words, he's thinking, why doesn't everybody—if they're just—if they're around, why doesn't everybody see Oh, he's assuming there are— you know, ghosts as he's gone. I mean, I, I I've said many times. I, I believe in at least one. The holy one. Yeah, that's where I was <laughs> I going with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I do believe in ghosts. So there are. So look, there are some biblical. I, so I did a little search. All right, well, I hear. looked into. I it. hadn't read your notes. So there's two instances <clears throat> where the disciples thought Jesus was a ghost. Okay, I remember that when he said, "Well, but Jesus said a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see, I have." Exactly. Which I, so that That's, tells me that, that Jesus didn't say, "Oh, you idiots, there's no ghost." He oh. he confirmed in oh. my mind. He confirmed, no doubt. That that was the, your best point. Yeah, I think that's a where is that? We need to. So that's uh, that's that's at. in uh, well, Man, it's in uh, Luke twenty four. Yeah, Luke twenty. That's one of my favorite passages in the Bible. Depending on your depending on your translation, because mine says they the, no. Jesus had just raised been raised from the dead, and he says, "Peace be with you," which he said that three times. Right. So because. You know, seeing dead people, which once again, another Hollywood movie. Where did they get that idea from? You know, I see dead people. Yeah. Well, I, well biblically speaking, you, you would have to believe not only in the miraculous, uh, Ephesians 2, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and you followed the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Right. So biblically speaking, there are evil spirits yep. and seems to be one kingpin, Satan himself. Right. A, a lot of people have trouble uh, dealing with that part of, of Christianity. In other words, there, there is a God of heaven, the God of love, the cre- he created all things, including the evil ones. Right. But... They just have a difficult time believing, seeing the unseen. You mentioned uh, the guy, the brother, wrote the book. Yeah. Seeing the unseen. I brought a copy of it to show the audience. I've mentioned this one before. This is the best book I've ever read about this subject, and Seeing the Unseen by Joe Beam. And it just kind of breaks down the sort of, like you just described, the sort of the hierarchy yep. of evil. Because mostly, like you said, it's evil spirit <clears throat> is what you see. But I, I did a little bit of a, you know, what happens is, you know, the, they, these guys were speaking mostly to one another in Aramaic. That language was then translated into Greek, and then that's been translated into English. So, you know, sometimes you have to look at the original words. And I did find it interesting that the word that in Luke 24, the Greek word there is pneuma, which means spirit or wind, mm-hmm. which is interesting. You know, with Jesus, remember when Jesus talked about the spirit and wind, how they were similar? Yep. And then the but the word in in the other time we hadn't talked about was when Jesus was walking across the Sea of Galilee. Remember that? Yep. <clears throat> and they were out there in the boat. They've been trying to make make hay, but the wind is blowing like crazy. And they look up and they see Jesus walking on the water, and they said, "Look, he's a ghost." What's interesting is the Greek word there is phantasma, which we would call it a phantasm in, in English, and it's when the invisible becomes visible. That's what the word means. Mm-hmm. It's a different Greek word. So when they saw him walk across the thing, they were like, oh, my goodness, it's a phantasm. You know, they didn't know. but it, So it's two different Greek words, but it's the same idea that it's something not physical. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, well he like, clarifies I mean, it in John 3. Uh, he, uh, Jesus and Nicodemus, to tell you the truth, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How can he be born again when he's old? Surely can it not enter a second time into his mother's womb? Now, here's the way Jesus straightens him out. I tell you the truth, unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then he makes this point. Flesh gives birth to flesh, which is your, 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 human, your human being. Right. But the <laughs> Spirit gives birth to Spirit. He's saying there's a difference between the... the natural, and the spiritual. You should not be surprised at me saying you must be born again. Then he compares it like you said, Al. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it, so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Yeah, He's just saying it's pretty simple if you see uh, very sinful, brutal behavior you, you kind of can surmise that something is behind that. That's what I've always thought. It's, you know, somebody goes into a school 
and kills 26 kids. For no reason. For no reason at all. A lot of them, they never find a reason. Right. And I'm thinking that person had to have had an evil spirit. I mean, there had to be a spirit of evil for you to even get there, you know? Not a lot about mental illness in the Bible, but a whole lot about demon demons yep. demons Evil demons demons i'm i just lean toward looking th- at things demonic demonic it's, well you know this uh it's throughout the whole Bible. well you had the you were talking about the dead hog i mean you had this story where jesus cast the spirit you mean this of, one out of the hog in mark five that i just turned to yeah i, I had no <laughs> idea you were going there great mind i mean that. It, it's amazing how often that happens well you said something about the hog and i thought well maybe was, that hog or i thought it was a beaver i'm still but he but said that him, text you you can read it out i mean it says it, they're there well i want to read that let's let's take a break so <clears throat> basically there's this guy and he's hanging out in the graveyard, which I think, by the way, all your Hollywood movies and stuff, there it is again. This you know, is where they get all this stuff. This is where they get all of it. Cause you know, when the guy... graveyards are scary, you know, because dead bodies are there. Remember the story in Acts with the woman following along, and they were taunting, and they were like, you know, they said who with it, who they were. And, yeah. And the, and the legion, they said, I am legion, for we are many. <laughs> That's right. Well, it, all of a sudden, we, we it's a bad hollywood movie yeah but it really that, happened that really happened so because you know, jesus said uh, come out come out of this man you evil spirit because this guy it said he couldn't be he couldn't be contained even with a chain so this guy's a rough looking i mean so are you going you know, with the the ghost or the spirits of dead people? ghosts well i don't know winds winds spirits I'm not sure. Are you going with demons as in? I mean, the only ones I can read about for sure is that the the apostles thought Jesus was a ghost. Let me give you a true story that was real. Oh, no. This, this, uh, I walked up with one of the brothers, and a young woman was standing outside one of these rehab type situations, and she was talking with the, the woman that runs it. So you have this one girl, I figure she's about 20. So she was talking to a, to the lady that heads up the whole program. So the brother and I, we walked up there, and I was about, you know, like 10 feet away. And since they were talking, we Is just, this a jail, a hospital? It's or? like a rehab okay, unit, you know, you. with right. rooms in it. Right. So I just walk up. I never said a word. I just walked up, had a Bible in my, my hand. I'd never seen this girl. She had never seen me before. We'd never seen each other in our life. So I just walk up, and I'm waiting on they finish till they finish the conversation. I didn't want to just bust up in there since mm-hmm. they were talking. She was kind of raising her voice. And when she turned around and saw me standing there with the other brother, we were just standing there. I had my Bible. I didn't say a word. She, a scowl came on her face, and she got on me. And she started cursing me over the, some of the filthiest language you ever heard. I was and just, she didn't know who you were? I'd never seen her before. Well, she may I, have known who he I was because he's famous. Well, but. I don't know whether she knew who I was or not, but she was letting me have it. <laughs> and I never spoke. I just sat there. And when she got done, she ran inside the building. Well, I walked in. The, the woman that heads up the thing said, whoa. I, said, <laughs> I don't know what got into her, Phil, but, boy, she she's coming on at you i said yeah i said i said look i said here's a little text and i gave her that ephesians 4 uh be angry but sin not i said don't let the sun go down while you're still angry i showed her that i said so don't feel bad about it i said do you think that girl would sit down with us and we could talk further and she said you want to talk to her after that cussing i said <laughs> only that would wait i said in. sure I said, she initiated it i said she, 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 <laughs> I said, see if you can track her down and see if she'll come in there. Now, listen to this. True story. We walk in there. It's me, the brother, and this girl. Yep. She shows up. The, the girl that runs the thing said, she said she had talked to y'all. Well, when she sat down, she just continued the tirade. And I said, if you'll just stop a minute and let me show you something, you may change your mind about how evil I am. I said, won't you just give me a chance to share some good news with you 
And she kept on and kept on. So finally she said, you ain't tell me that GT Bible, yeah, yeah. So she finally gets quiet, and I tell her that God loves her, and I love her. And I said, there's a way out of here. He died on, for, on a cross for you to, to remove all your sin. And I said, to bring you out from under the control of the evil one. And when I said that, she was seated at the table like she was seated like this. I was sitting across from her, and she was like right here. And when I said, you're doing what you're doing, and the reason you're cursing me is you're controlled by the evil one. But God's spirit will get to you past that. And as soon as I said that, she slammed, she screamed and slammed her head on the table. She just brought her head down on the table, and I'm like, ooh, that was quite the lick. <laughs> she bounces her head off the table, and she shrieks like a something you never heard, and it was kind of like projectile vomiting coming forth from her mouth as she left the room. So she's well, vomiting on the way out. She, when I said, <clears throat> you're doing what you're doing by the power of the evil one, and God's spirit can, can heal you. That's when the head came down and she took off and throwing up. So she runs away. Well, the girl that was the receptionist seated out there come running in. She said, what in the world was all that about? It's an exorcism. I said, well, yeah, she said, that was a deliverance. <laughs> I said, well, hopefully, I we'll, I said, hopefully we'll see in a minute. It was a deliverance so, of whatever she So ate. 10 minutes goes by. She runs to the bathroom. 10 minutes goes by. She walks back in, and the first thing I noticed was that her countenance had changed. She, she started out, she was almost a different color from when I first saw her and all that. So she comes in, she's wiping her face like this with a, with a towel, and she sits down and in a meek voice. She said, can y'all help me? <laughs> I said, we can help you. Wow. So I... Preach the gospel to her again, went through it again. She's quiet. And I said, I think some are coming down to my house tomorrow, some of y'all. I said, you can get with them if you want to. So the next day, when the woman who runs the thing came up in a couple of buses, they came down on the river, and about there's about 20. They brought about 20 with them. Well, somebody, I just kind of saw them all standing there, but someone pulled on my shirt like that, and I looked down. She's a little bitty woman. And I said, I looked at her, I said, are you that girl that we talked to last night? She said, yep. She said, I want you to take me to the river to baptize me. I said, well, get in line because a lot more. (laughs) And look, the girl went on her way rejoicing as far as I know. But that's a true story. That's an amazing it, it, story. And it got my attention. It really did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because, you know, first you take a curse and then you look at something and all of a sudden projectile or whatever, my, the brother with me, <laughs> oh, Owens, Owens was with me. And he, when he looked, when the, she ran out of the room, you know, with all that, he looked at me and he went, <laughs> and I said, I said, lightly, I said, demonic. <laughs> <laughs> He was but like, you didn't know. You were just like, what is that? I, I was guessing. Yeah. So well, that's I wonder the story. That's, now, that's here's the, the thing, story. Al. How does just yeah. words from this book, how come someone goes from cursing and just just vow and all of a sudden a meek little voice says, can you help me? Well, it Our, certainly exactly it looks got like my attention, I'll we tell were, you that. What we were talking about. Let's take another break. By the way, I've never told any very few people that story. I had heard. I've seen parts some more, that's, but that's one that kind of came. Well, since to my we're mind. having idea day about the <laughs> unseen world, here's here's a thought I've had before, but I don't think I've ever shared it with another person. But when you read Romans eight, of course I'm I'm taking some assumptions here because you got to think. So what happens to the spirits of dead people? Now, when you read 1 Thessalonians 4, it says God is bringing with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. And you know where their bodies are, the cemetery. Well, right. But but he doesn't talk about the people who are not in Jesus, right? Now, That's there right. is a passage in the Gospels that says there'll be a resurrection. John 5. John 5 that we studied. There'll be a resurrection of the righteous and the wicked. So Everyone will be raised to face judgment is what it says. So you have the dead spirits. 
wherever they are. Possibly some like, because there's the story that we just read about the pigs. It all started, well, this guy was chained up, but he was in a graveyard. Uh-huh. And if you notice, there's a few other stories like that. So you're like, well, why are they hanging around graveyards? So it does seem to suggest just by the backdrop. There's a connection to the dead. There is a connection to the dead. However, what I'm going to say is when you start talking about demons, I think it's something different. I do too. And so does that. Beam, by the way. He talks about well, that. I didn't know what he thought. But it's here's a, why. That's a different category. Here's why I get that. Which And there's a greater point here. You know, Romans 8, famous passage. You know, he, he shares the gospel of Jesus. Christ Jesus died. More than that was raised to life. Is at the right hand of God. This is at 834. Mm-hmm. Interceding for us. Then he says this, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? So now we're going big big picture. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, nakedness, danger, sword. And then he says we face death all day long like sheep to be slaughtered. Then he says, and all these things were more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life. Well, then he says this, neither angels nor demons. And my point is, however the angels, when you do a study of of that, so just off the top of your head, be careful when you entertain strangers because you might entertain an angel. Where is that, Hebrews 1? It's it's, uh, Hebrews somewhere else. In Hebrews, also in Hebrews it says, are not all angels ministering spirits to help those? So, okay, you have those. So by association. good, good spirits, unseen, and bad spirits. Well, Correct. Because look, he said everything has categories: death nor life. Well, angels or demons. So you kind of have the opposite of the angel would be the demon. They just like death and and life, but it's in the same. What would you call that, Al? Uh, it's in the same category, uh, right? Nor present or future, because the category would be time here. Um, neither. Height nor depth, which is that's why he, he's he's wording this in a way that makes me think that demons are not dead dead people. No. I think uh, they're I think they're fallen angels that crossed over with Satan. Or, yeah, and they're out and they to became do harm. something different because of sin and evil. I know this <clears throat> several places. There's millions. Of, I mean, there's a lot. Oh, yeah. There's a well, line. and then you have First John four. Whatever that means, you know, it says, be careful to test the spirits to see which one is from God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I ever recognize that I'm in a spirit multiple choice, I'll, I'll it, but it's hard to, now a lot of people have different interpretations and, and people, it always makes me nervous when people s- Say to me, well, God told me this, or God told me that, because I'm but like, how, well, you, how, how do you know it's God whispering yep. in your ear? Didn't you uh, run up on one of these shamans over in Africa? Ooh, you know, yeah. it's it's pretty. They say this this happens all the time. Well, and the brother you were with when you saw this thing come out of the woods, I mean, and, yeah, I was just kind of like intrigued, you know, because Americans don't think about stuff like this. But what did this thing look like? Well, he he had it looked like a ghillie suit. But it, not as nice as the ones we have. But it was like that. It oh, was just but like he had it on. Oh, fully. You couldn't even see him. You know, I could. All I could see is his. So it eye. wasn't a creature. He was trying to look like he a was creature. right. He was a person, but he was some yeah. kind of shaman. So he's coming what down. Are you the, saying shaman? Shaman, yeah, like a. I've never heard that. Didn't one. you say smoke was coming off of him? They, oh, he had a thing with smoke, and he's dancing around coming down the street. And so I'm standing out there in the yard, just looking at it, and I'm thinking, this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. So. Isaac's wife comes out and says, oh, come back inside, Pastor Allen. You don't want to be out here. This this is evil. You know, and I said, well, what is he doing? He said, well, he's trying to get people to give him money or he'll curse them. You know, like put a curse Now I'm on. out on that. <laughs> but that's, you know. so what I'm saying is, but they were, they were like, don't even mess with that. So, I, you know, I followed the, the, their lead and thought, well. Uh, it's kind of like the voodoo people that. You know, yeah, they'll, with the they'll make a the... doll and they'll, oh, but well, you know. So I don't know. <laughs> I, it's hard for me to go down that road because I just. Well, let me read you this story. This is we, I think we've mentioned it before. This is in Acts nineteen. Uh, said God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. 
So Paul had so much stuff radiated out of him, he was casting out demons, wasn't even there. So then it says some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. So they had him a little racket going here. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish high priest, that's who these guys were, they're doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on him and overpowered all seven of them, and he gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Huh. And that has always got my attention because mm-hmm. I thought, you know, you don't want to take this whole thing lightly because the evil is real. These these boys took a beating. I don't have a problem. I mean, I'm trying to remember what they told us when we went to uh, school. I remember that I just I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> But you know why you were sleeping with your eyes open? You, yeah. you, you, you it's hard t- to do that, Al. You're <laughs> acting like that's a bad thing. You have to train well, yourself. But it hurts you when you're trying to remember what somebody said. Let's take one another break. But I think I do remember there was a debate on whether demon possession happens today. Because and well, people the argument to, was something about in my mind, no doubt about it. I agree. And you think so? I do. And do you remember the argument against was something about First Corinthians thirteen when it was like when all things, yeah, prophecies and cease uh, and the tongues yeah. and all that. But stuff. you know, I think that's a stretch. Uh, it is a stretch, and here's why: because I think the evil one, Satan, who is the chief, and that's this is where Beam's book is so good. I mean, he's got his ways of being effective in a culture like America when everybody thinks everything's mental illness you know just take a pill just whatever it's not going to have as as much effect as it would in some other place so I right. think it's more a question about well what he can do to do the most harm to people but let me ask you this is what I think I th- what about the verse that says resist the evil and he'll flee from you yep so do you think before the cross that people had no choice or no aiding and abetting the demons, which is what I've always thought. I would say the circumstances were far more dire before Jesus. Well, I, what I'm saying is I think he could attack someone, but when Jesus died and was buried and raised, I've always believed that he's now only going to attack somebody if they allow it. Well, here's the other or thing. Is that, what no, do you think? I think that's right. And here, But here's what I do think. If you read the Old Testament... There's some stories in there. We talked about the witch at Endor and stuff like that. But you don't see a lot of this. It seems to be right around when Jesus came, when he was here, and then right after he left. I mean, obviously that's most of the Bible, but I'm saying that sort of activity, that evil that was seen to be everywhere and all these evil spirits. But remember, Satan was here actively engaged in the plan. He had a Mm -hmm. plot going against Jesus. Well, and the answer, one of the things, that the Hebrew writer mentions Hebrews 2.14, since the children have flesh and blood, that's humanity, he too, Jesus, shared in the humanity, God becomes flesh, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. The point is, you have to believe in the spirit world, Al. Correct. Or you would look at that and say, well, what's he talking about? I mean, if the power of death is is the devil's work, and here comes Jesus, and when he was resurrected, that that's when Satan, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free, even from death. Right. Well, you look at that, and you say, you know what? Uh, spirit world or no spirit world, we read about it in the Bible, but I don't know how we're going to get out of here alive without the spirit world. Well, well it does say our our struggle's not against flesh and blood, that's what, but against you the mean right here in Ephesians six spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly. Realm. So he is attacking the powers like, of this dark world, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So he's saying this is heaven and <laughs> earth flowing. I mean, I feel like when I meet a kid... And it's organized. Very organized. Evil. Which is why When I meet a kid with cancer, I mean, I didn't necessarily read this anywhere, but I'm just thinking there's this is an evil attack on somebody that's innocent. Mm-hmm. That's just the way I think. And you and look, you look at the story of Job and it, it, it would 
seem to be you're exactly right. I mean, the evil one was the one that was attacking him, and I mean, it was family killed, it was yeah. illnesses. Well, he had disease, disease. At least, bad at least we have the source of evil, Satan, right, and the source of good, right, God, and and I'm seeing both of them. During, I must stay on planet Earth. I've seen the ones who fear God and love their neighbor. I've seen them, and I've seen the ones who say no. They are satanic, and I mean they do things to Satan. They go around, and it's just a nightmare. So the question, murder, whatever it is, you know. The question we can't answer that this uh, this man and his wife asked is: is these are these spirits? They don't leave, or do they come back? Now, the interesting the story in First well, Samuel twenty eight, the I spirit think, comes back. Well, but I, yeah, I think they're. Confusing those demons with these spirits. What's well, true, but but what I'm saying is, that even with different categories, it's obvious that they're here. Whether you call that a ghost or spirit possessed. But person. however, Al, we have the Holy Spirit. We do, and so this is like if Ghostbusters were real, <laughs> which they're not. It was a TV show. If they would have run up on the actual Holy Ghost, they wouldn't have busted that. You know, it, the power. Because it can raise, I mean, it was a silly show. So you, so you didn't need the guns with the thing, you just need the Holy Spirit. But we watched that because you said, why do we do that? Because people have these questions. So they make movies to try to think, oh, this is how we... we and would there is By a the spirit way, there around. is, uh, what do they call it? The Church of Satan, what's it called? Uh, the, yeah, like what? the satanic. Satanic, the worshipers, they all meet there. They're all in. With yeah, the there's devil. the Church of Satan. I mean, they, they bow down But do we it. believe in ghosts? Yes. At least one. And do we live in spirits? Yes. I mean, if you bring up the the story, who was that that came back from the dead? Samuel? Samuel. He came. So back. Saul goes to a medium, mm-hmm. which meant she had the ability to do it. Because you, you see these mediums, well, we all is, we all think, assume they're all fa- fake, but she wasn't fake. She actually brought him back. But is this pre? Do you think that's what I was asking a while ago? Do you think pre Jesus becoming flesh? Had any effect on that? Well, because that's the argument, right? Now, whether I whether you believe that I, or not, and I don't, and here's why: because the Holy Spirit wasn't available for everybody like once Jesus came, but the Holy Spirit was still active. I mean, David got the Holy Spirit. There were there were people, oh, yeah. God's people. The Spirit of God came into them, so the Spirit was around. Mm. He just wasn't. Well, available I've heard him say it came on them. You know, which I don't know, maybe semantics, but right. Yeah. Well, the indwelling Holy Spirit is different than. When we see the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when when they oh, had all these yeah. gifts, yeah, and you we'll study that. When yeah, we'll we get, get to there. Acts. We'll get but there. But I do think it's interesting. The other story that we haven't talked about is when the guy was fearful with the army coming toward him, and he's like, "God, oh, open yeah. his eyes!" And when he did, he saw the spiritual forces of good, angels and chariots, fire. And, I think the that's, biggest that's Second Samuel six. That's Elisha, which was Elijah's good memory. Guy I think the biggest problem that that we have is trying to understand because you got to remember when Jesus was raised from the dead, which we just got through spending hours talking about this on previous podcasts. His body was had become translucent, transparent, trans. He he was transfigured. The, Transfigured, whatever. There's not enough trans. <laughs> he was a so, shapeshifter because it said I mean, the door was locked and he came in. Well, that only a spirit can do that. By my understanding of, or someone who had di- di- power over dimensions that you could just be here and then be there. So my point is, teleporter. He was a teleporter. Yeah. My point is, if if we have the Holy Spirit and there's this rival spiritual forces of evil who are capable of some of these types of actions. I mean, I, I don't know, but it's like when a guy opened his eyes, it was there. Well, it was there before he opened his eyes. He just couldn't see it. Right. So I think a lot of this Which was stuff, quite the scene because he's looking out and he, the enemy has advanced on him and surrounded him, and all of a sudden when God opens his some eyes to see this brings this into focus – it was like Jay's described. Then all of a sudden, the hills come alive with all these beings and fiery chariots. And I mean, yeah. it's pretty incredible when you think about it. So well, I think it's you, scary. You said it. It's a little scary when you think about 
the negative out to get you. Yeah. And then it's very encouraging. And you think that they're there to protect but you. But he did say put on the full armor. <laughs> now he <laughs> said our battles against spiritual you better put an arm you better get some armor. <laughs> and look, they were all spiritual things. Well you said the right phrase and we'll close with this. We don't really know because we, we can sort of surmise, but we're physical. We're not we're not in that realm. We're here. So we can only just kind of read and put things together. The, I mean, the you being, won't know till you get the, there. The being that's out there, he said, uh, uh, God will bring about in his, let's see, uh, keep this commandment without spot or, or, or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there's a promise Jesus is coming back. This is First Timothy 6, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. It's a great it's point. Got, it's got to mean you, so. You, well, it's a great point because it also tells you Satan is not immortal. That's He's right. A created being. That's so right. We're on the right side of this thing. So thanks for the question. Uh, I think it was Jeff. Uh, really interesting, and you know, it's fun to just kind of wonder. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes, and don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.